The Mirage F1 has been a big question in everyone's minds. Why it's not here, it's going to be in War Thunder, and why it's taken so long to have it added in. Today we're going to try and answer how it's going to perform if it's added the way top tier is now. Without further ado, the Mirage F1. The Mirage F1 began as a private venture by Dassault to design a swept-wing variant of the Mirage 3 which would eventually become the Mirage F2. However, as the F2 and F3 would eventually be cancelled, Dassault then began work on a smaller all-weather interceptor. The government expressed interest in contract with the design under Mirage F1. The first Mirage F1 prototype flew in 1966. On its fourth flight, it attained a speed of Mach 2. Unfortunately, in 1967, the prototype crashed due to loss of control, killing its pilot. After officially entering service in the French Air Force, it acquired a radar and was designated the Mirage F-1C as an interceptor and Mirage F-1A as an attacker without the radar and a laser rangefinder in the housing. The Mirage F-1 saw extensive combat experience with a wide scope of its expert customers. Iraq used them in the Iran-Iraq war to limited effectiveness. While it was able to shoot down several F-14 Tomcats, Iraqis also suffered Mirage F-1 losses. The F-1 service in Iraq continued well into the Persian Gulf War, losing heavily against a way more advanced American aircraft. The most relevant combat experience of the Mirage F-1 was during the South African Border War. The South African Air Force acquired license to manufacture the Mirage F-1 as well as a few examples before the 1977 arms embargo. Initially, the Mirage F-1 enjoyed relative success facing off against MiG-21s piloted by Cubans during the assistance of the M MPLA in Angola. However, as the war raged on, the Cubans eventually deployed the new MiG-23 ML fighter which turned the tides. According to Cuban claims, no MiG-23 ML was ever lost in air combat against Mirage F-1s. The Mirage F-1 is a single-seat swept-wing all-weather interceptor. Is powered by the Snecma ATAR 9K50 afterburning turbojet with 70.6 kN of thrust. For reference, the MiG-23 MLD in game operates at 96.2 kN. The Mirage F-1 is a small and nimble aircraft compared to the MiG-23 MLD. In conventional dogfights, the Mirage F-1 will have an early advantage against the MiG-23 MLD. However, in a sustained rate fight, the Mirage F-1 will struggle against the MiG-23 MLD's dogtooth wings that are fully stretched out. The Mirage F-1's avionics includes a Thompson CSFB f radar warning system. For countermeasures, the Mirage F-1 can choose between a FEMA chaff flare dispenser pod under one wing or the eventual upgrade to the Lacroix chaff flare dispenser in the parachute fairing, sacrificing the drogue chute. The point of contention with the Mirage F-1 is its radar. The Cyrano 4 is an improvement on the Cyrano 2 of the Mirage 3 series, however it still does not utilize pulse Doppler signal processing. The original Cyrano 4 does not have look down capability. The Cyrano 4-1 had a moving target indicator mode providing limited look down capability. The Cyrano 4-2 had limited air to ground capability, and finally, the Cyrano 4M, only present on the F1C200 series, improved but not perfected the look down shoot down capabilities, but included a track well scan capability. Well, certainly a step up to the Mirage 3 that precedes it. The Cyrano 4 is nevertheless non pulse Doppler and will suffer from the issues that something like the F4E would suffer from. The Mirage F1A, however, trades the radar for a laser rangefinder, limiting it to a daylight only strike fighter. Like the Mirage 3, the Mirage F1 mounts two DAFA 553 30mm guns underneath a fuselage with 150 rounds per gun. While the 553 has improvements over the Mirage 3's DAFA 552, in game, they should perform the same. For air to air missiles, the Mirage F 1 uses the Magic 1 and Magic 2. It can carry two of these missiles in the wingtip rails. The Magic 2 is an improved all aspect version of the Magic 1. The Magic 2 is capable of over 50G in a greater range than the AIM 9L. For radar missiles, the Mirage F 1 carries the Super 530F, an improved variant of the R 530 mounted on the Mirage 3. The Super 530 has a range of 25 kilometers traveling at Mach 5. You can carry two of these on the wing pylons, however the Cyrano 4 radar limits its effectiveness. Ground attack ordnance, the Mirage F-1 can carry the AS-30L and BGL series of weapons with an Atlas II pod in the centerline pylon. It also carries SNAP rockets and unguided bombs. 
Mirage F1 is a plane slowly becoming more obsolete as the updates pass by. If we had the Mirage F1 without the Magic 2, which is a very capable IR missile, it falls prey to the F4E Syndrome, a plane that classed by its competitors merely on the basis of low altitude capability. Don't get me wrong though, this doesn't mean we shouldn't add it. The salient point being the perfect time to add it was during Equa Strike when it enjoyed a bit of the South African hype by being one of the aircraft the SAAF flew. But now, adding it will not be that much for the French tree. It's not going to shine like the Mirage 3 when it's added, as the Mirage F1 will be outclassed by the MLD and the Vigan in almost every way. I think the Mirage F1 is a definite 11.0. It can't go higher than that unless it has a Magic 2, and by then it only has two of it. But the F1 can also go lower in 11.0 and have no equal at 10.7. Obviously, we'll go after the Mirage 3E and have a research cost of 400,000 RP, 1,060,000 as on purchase cost, and 360,000 crew train cost. And there we are, the Mirage 1. It's a shame, I'd like to fly the Mirage F1 already, but if a guy just sitting on it to add it with the Magic 2s, then I completely understand. What are your thoughts on the Mirage F1? I think it's the French F4E. It's blisteringly good without Magic 2s and only Super 530Fs, but only if it were added 3 updates ago. This is the Dr. MD, Villa France.